from 1979. It's Disney's answer to Star Wars with The Black Hole. I did not really like this film. I think that it was very hard for me to understand the main point and the story of this. I did like the robots, though. I actually like the robots, too. Even though uh, they were not very animated, like in their eyes, like Vincent and Bob, uh, their eyes were somewhat dead, like the Ewoks in Return of the Jedi. Yeah. And I guess they were supposed to be animated, and they were working on it right up to the last minute and couldn't get it to work. But even with that, and the fact that they're a little bit pedestrian looking, I thought they were interesting. And the enemy robots, Maximilian and the Sentry robots, and that one sharpshooting robot, Star, mm -hmm. I thought they were the best characters in the movie, frankly. <laughs> I, they kind of outshone the other characters. Now, you got some good actors in this film, but I think they were miscast or misused. And the story was basically Disney updating 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and setting it in space which actually showed promise, but I don't think they delivered on it here. So the one thing about it is the black hole is well titled because that's where they should have thrown this thing, right in the black hole. <laughs> I actually did think the black hole was very pretty though. And that was the one other thing that I actually really liked about this. In all of the scenes, even if it was just looking out a window and they were talking, so the main point was they were talking, but it was in the background, it was still moving. It wasn't just still. And actually, you've hit on something that is true. This is a gorgeous looking movie. I mean, the set pieces are great and the special effects are dynamite in this. In that very dynamic black hole being in the background all the time and out the windows. The Cygnus is a gorgeous looking ship. And the fact that there's so much glass and when it lights up, so when you're looking at it from the exterior and it's all lit up, mm -hmm. it's beautiful that way. But you, when you're within the Cygnus, with all the windows and, your, and the ability to see out into space. Mm -hmm. That was gorgeous as well. And some interesting uh, places inside the ship when they witnessed the funeral of what they think are mm -hmm. robots and it's actually the human crew that's been turned into basically automatons. Mm -hmm. That's a gorgeous looking scene and the, um, the sled or the car that's on the track that yes. travels the length of the Cygnus. All really, really cool looking things couple major issues in there though because when the meteors hit the Cygnus mm -hmm. at that point when the Cygnus is open to space they should all be dead because yeah. there's no air they you know in fact at one point Joseph Bottoms character is being sucked out into space and he's like oh I'm fine I'm out here I'm it's okay I'm breathing yeah. there's a bit of a problem there but you know all that aside gorgeous looking film yes I actually do think that the Cygnus was very pretty and I really liked how there was like a glass tunnel that you would go through in those cars and the one thing I wish they would have done with that is I wish they made a ride at Disney World with that. Maybe I wouldn't have liked the movie it was based on but I think that was very cool. Yeah and you know it actually reminded me a little bit when we went on that Disney cruise and they had that water slide that's in a tube yeah. that went around the cruise ship. It was similar to that but if you themed it like this right. that would be really cool. Like they're having a Tron roller coaster. And even though you're not a fan of Tron, I kind of like Tron, but you're not a fan of it. The roller coaster looked pretty good from what we saw of where it was. So that's a good point. They could have done that. Maybe their Imagineers could think about that. The Black Hole is simply, certainly a, a movie that could stand in updating. I could see them approaching this with a reboot and you know maybe improving upon the story a little bit. You know, the characters, I mean, Robert Forster's a great actor, but I think he's horribly miscast as the captain here. He's just not very dynamic in that role. Joseph Bottoms was never a strong actor to begin with, so Charlie Pizer is a little bit all over the place. Uh, Yvette Mimia is kind of just there. It's not her fault, they just don't give her much to work with. Anthony Perkins is rather interesting. I thought his character was rather interesting. He had an interesting story arc because he's kind of like a fan of Reinhardt's in some ways. And Reinhardt is obviously a maniac. <laughs> um, and he chose the scenery. Maximilian shall choose the scenery. I'll give you one piece of trivia really quick. So the robot Maximilian is not actually named after Maximilian Shell. 
he was already named Maximilian before Maximilian Schell was cast in the movie. All they did was adjust the spelling of his name to match the actor's name. He's actually named after, I think it's Werner von Braun, who is the German scientist, and his middle name is Maximilian, and that's where the name comes from. But here's the fun part. At the end of the movie, when Reinhardt is sort of absorbed into Maximilian, and his eyes are looking out of it, he's actually in Maximilian's shell. Mm. I went a long way for that, but you know what? That was better plotted than the movie. I stand by it. Easy. Actually, after that happens, once that happens, I thought that it was really, really confusing. Yeah. I could not tell where they were, what they were doing. You're talking about the ending. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what they were... I think they were going for copying 2001 A Space Odyssey. But the movie, the entire way through... You know, 2001 A Space Odyssey is that type of movie. It's very trippy the whole way through. I can't follow 2001 A Space Odyssey. That's just me. It's not my kind of storytelling. It's like poetry. Sometimes I understand poetry, sometimes I do not. That's how 2001 works. The black hole was not like that for the whole story until we get to the end and all of a sudden it's this trippy ending and it's like, what are we saying? I mean, was he in hell? When he's inside Maximilian and he's on the, on the thing and all the people are there and there's all the fire, I'm, I'm assuming that's hell. Yeah, right? it could be. The movie was actually very confusing for me as it was, and then at that ending, I completely gave out, because I could not understand yeah, anything. Yeah, I, I don't know that I could explain the ending to you. I mean, I'm guessing that this is some sort of time distortion, because they're going through the black hole, but I really didn't get time distortion. I mean, they were remembering things that they said before, in the past. I don't, I don't know. They, they tried to do something with the ending that they hadn't done with the storytelling that far in the film, and so it, it didn't kind of, you know. We're listening to a ballad the whole way through and all of a sudden we get to jazz at the end. I don't I didn't understand that. So I didn't get that either. But it is a gorgeous looking film. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got to give them points for that. And I did like the robots, both the good robots and the evil robots. I thought were interesting. Um, and I will say even though I didn't like the ending, that image of Maximilian up on the the mountain there mm -hmm. at the end, very similar to uh, at the end of Fantasia when the demon is up on top of the mountain. It looked very similar to that. That was a gorgeous looking shot. I mean, it looked really cool. Maybe they were trying to set up for a sequel, right? He survives Maybe. and he's inside Maximilian and then the other three survived and so they're setting it up for a sequel. The black hole strikes back. I don't, I don't know. We unflush the hole. I, I don't know. Well, anyway, anything else? No, I don't think so. All right, for you? I think this is one for free. I think that it's very pretty and the black hole is very pretty. I think that the robots are probably one of my favorite parts in this. And they're not many. There are not many favorite parts in this. But I think if it's free, you should check it out. Yeah. Believe it or not, even though I've criticized it heavily in the review, I'm going to give it one for free and I'll tell you why. I'm critical of it because I think it was a really huge missed opportunity. I think they had all the right pieces and parts as far as an idea for a story. They had great crafting of the of the visuals. Mm -hmm. And I feel like what a missed opportunity this was. And that's why I'm hard on it. But I'm going to give it one for free because the look of the film is gorgeous. The robots are kind of interesting. And it's a piece of that Disney nostalgia from that time period. So for free, it's it's okay. I don't know that you'll make it to the end. But if you do and you understand it, let us know what you think it meant, because I, I still don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. 